I run the um, BA in drawing at Camberwell College of Arts. And um, running a session on drawing and measurement is an interesting challenge because the feedback I get from students is that this is one of the more intimidating units because it conjures up all kinds of things like mathematics, straight lines, the use of tools, and complicated um, uh, measurements and a need to be really, really accurate. Um, but I also hear from teachers that this is also very intimidating to teach. So um, what I've tried to do today is think about a way of uh, people getting involved in the act of drawing and measurement in a way of kind of tricking you into thinking about it without even knowing that you're doing it in a way. Um, so, and the reason why is because on the BA level we do uh, a component within the first year that's all about measurement. Um, it's done over a seven week period of time so the students get a chance to experience how uh, measurement and accuracy um, can soon lead you on to all sorts of kind of creative interpretations of what measurement can mean. Because it, it doesn't necessarily just mean um, centimeters, meters, and so on. So, I don't know if you have already the brief, but I can just tell you what, what we're going to do. We have a very short uh, time to do it. Um, we're going to divide the group up into groups of four or five, depending on how the numbers work, and you have a task. And the task is that you're running a gallery, and this is the gallery space, and you need to send drawings to the artists so that they know what kind of space they're going to be working in. So the problem is, for this task, is that we do not have any tools. We don't have any rulers, we don't have any tape measures. So you're going to have to work together to try and develop a drawing that somehow conveys to the artist the size of the space, the height of the ceiling, what the materials in the space are made of, where they could possibly hang work, place work, position work, where are the windows, what's the view out the window, where are the light sources. All of that kind of information needs to somehow be contained within the drawing. And you have an hour, okay? So we've got A1 sheets of paper. I recommend you use a, a large sheet of paper. And maybe you point little jobs within the group so one person is gonna notate uh, how you're, you're arriving at uh, decisions and uh, methods and mapping out the space. Maybe one person is going to be pacing the room. I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, predetermine how you're going to do the, the, the exercise, but you, you might think how you could work together on, on the project. And one thing I might say is, if I were going to introduce this as a project to a group of students over a longer period of time, I would talk about the whole history of standards and measures, because when you begin talking about that, it, you're soon talking about the body in relation to space and the whole, the origins of, of standards and measure and all come back to the length of the hand, the, the length of your, the pace, the height of an average person, all these kinds of things start to come up. So um, it's, it's a kind of nice, more human way of kind of relating to the task of, of measuring in, in relation to drawing. And then you also, in the process, become aware of how drawing is a process of translation. That here's the 3D world around here, and how is it going to be translated to a drawing so that someone understands? Oh, is that longer than that? I wonder if that's the central point that comes from that, because this, this ends longer, isn't it? Yeah. Are these two the same? <laughs> Just one of those ones. Are these, are these the same length? But we all know how big a piece of A1 paper is. Yeah. Well, so we measure. How many pieces of eight ones? Yeah. Paper, when I was then no. But I think it's all of them. And this is that the sound of eight ones for. Yeah. 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 In, it, it would be well to utilise, we utilising the internal space as well, wouldn't we? Yeah. 
started to explore the, the actual dimension of the space. So it went in two ways really. What we wanted to do was we wanted to try and produce a drawing without doing any drawing, if you like. Um, so Victoria came up with the idea of creating a, a viewfinder that then built in the key points, the floor and the ceiling fundamentally, and a horizon line, a horizon point, which you could then take a triangle and paste that out to approximately the edge of the space and then you could lay that down and then you could get another triangle, do it the other way, place that in the other corner and then the third one in the third corner. So you'd end up standing within a virtual space that was the size of the gallery show. What that would then allow you to do is that would then allow you to start understanding the, the idea of the height and it would start to allow you the, un the, the understanding of the floor space which is where this plan came in that Ian and Anna were working on and, and constructing. So you end up with a scale model of the space as well, which is in little three dimensions. You want to expand on that bit? Okay, so I got the measurements. Basically, there's several ways of taking the measurements. One is it's using body height of around about six foot, measuring on a piece of wood. Also, you could use like that, the, the height of the breeze blocks, the length of the breeze blocks, which are fixed units. Uh, to measure space. And so we actually got started with the external dimensions of the triangle, we found out it wasn't quite equal. Um, from that we actually envisaged this being sent out. So instead of being just a 2D plan, it's almost like a bit of origami that can be folded up. Uh, here we've got the height of an average person next to the entrance. Uh, we've also got a key here that Anna did um, that actually forms part of the plan. And the blue line represents the possible exhibition space that works around things like doors and windows. Um, we, we worked out, first of all with this one, a very basic visual of what the space looked like and worked out the angle, which is fairly clear after a while, wasn't it, 1945s. And then we had to work out the, um, like everyone else, the dimensions along there, and the bricks were the obvious unit. So we followed the bricks along, worked out how many, and then that became a more accurate drawing. And then um, B worked out the scale, of the, so this is, this is the real brick, and we worked out that it, on our drawing it came out at um, uh, 1 to 128. So we, we then made a ruler to do the plan to scale. But we were much slower working than that previous group, so we didn't get as far as any of the uh, sockets or anything like that. Um, and then, Richard, do you want to talk about your...? Oh, well, not really, no. Um, and we um, quickly measured uh, a figure um, with tape, and it's over on the wall there, then transposed that, assuming that it was a certain set of units, i.e. four bricks high, and then a drawing was done to fit into that to give some sense of the scale of the human within the, within the space. Now, this is a bit more sort of back of a fag packet sort of thing. First of all, try to kind of get a feeling for the space. And then we stumbled into several sorts of measuring. First, we decided he was six foot tall and that we'd use him for a measure, but we started to think feet got really confused. So we used a sheet of A1 and everything's done in measurements of A1. 